Okay, 3.3 projectile motion. In 3.2, we saw acceleration due to gravity. Okay, and we saw basically uh, we dropped a ball and every time step we saw that the, dis the displacement between okay I know it's not moving, okay use your imagination we saw that for every time step the displacement got larger and larger and larger and we saw that this exhibited a curvature position time meaning that for every time step this the, pos the position between two successive positions so to speak got larger and larger okay got larger and larger and so that means my my position time curve has a has a curvature and we know that if there's a curvature we know that there's some kind of acceleration because if i take the second derivative of that i will get a non-zero acceleration okay but what happens so that's just if you drop it down but perhaps even a more general kind of motion is something called projectile motion where you actually throw a ball up and it goes up and then it comes down again. And so we'll consider just vertical projectile motion, meaning we throw the ball straight up and it comes straight down. And so if we look at these um, successive times, okay, we'll see what? We'll see as we throw it up, this is position time now. There's the position at whatever, the first frame. There's the position at the second frame, position. What we see here is, there's my position time. We see again a curved motion, curvature. There's a curvature. So immediately I know, well, there's some kind of acceleration going on here. So this is projectile motion, motion. I throw the ball up, the, the split second, it leaves my hand, right? There is no more applied force from my hand, okay? Let's see what the textbook says here. If an object is launched upward, the launch affects only, only the initial velocity. Once the object is released, the rest of its motion is determined by gravity alone. So if there's my hand... There's the ball, and I throw the ball up. Then once it starts to uh, follow its trajectory, the only, uh, its motion is only determined by gravity after that. Okay. So we can see now that this is projectile motion. It goes up, 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 and then it stops, and then it turns around and starts to come down again. Now, what is the velocity time curve going to look like it's going to look like that right so what's happening at zero seconds we have a positive velocity there's the slope so we have a positive velocity we have a positive velocity there what about this one we still have positive but it's less positive so we put that down there what about this one it's still positive but less positive so that's Positive velocity, but less positive. And we keep doing that. What about here? Uh, wait. These are not aligned, by the way, so obviously it's not going to work. But let's see if I can quickly align this. That looks a bit better to me. Okay. So if I align this, what's happening there? I have a zero slope, which means my velocity is zero. So this entire time here, guys, we are... Our velocity vector is up if we take pos up as positive. So even though the velocity is decreasing, it is still moving up. It's still moving up. And then over there its velocity is zero. And then, it, then it's the slope of the position time curve becomes more and more negative as we go along, which means our velocity becomes more and more negative. So it turns around and starts to move in this direction. Now, you all know this already, but it's good to, for completion. What is my acceleration the entire time? Well, because the slope is constant right through, the slope is constant, I'm going to have a negative uh, acceleration. It's a negative slope. And we know that because it's gravity, this value should be 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay? 
think that's all that I need to say there. Okay, I hope you guys are getting the hang of it.